Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time Israeli forces hitting targets overnight in southern Gaza, while talks on a potential new ceasefire collapse and Israel pulls out its delegation. ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge has the latest now from Starot, Israel. Tom, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Whit. We're about three miles from the Gaza Strip, and we just heard Israeli artillery firing out into Gaza. And about 20 minutes ago, we saw and we heard several rockets being fired from Gaza here into southern Israel, with the death toll in Gaza this weekend quickly rising. This morning, battles raging with Israeli troops on the ground in northern Gaza. The IDF releasing this video claiming it struck terror targets, including Hamas command centers, ammo dumps and tunnel shafts. Overnight, Hamas rockets intercepted over central Israel, with Israel intensifying its bombardment of Gaza. Missiles slamming into a residential building in the south in video circulating online. The injured rushed into hospitals which can barely cope. For the dead, prayers and grief. This man says, my brother is gone, his daughter too. More than 700 killed and hundreds more injured in the past two days, according to the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry. In total, more than 15,000 killed and rising. Israeli officials insisting they're using leaflets, warning residents to leave areas before they're hit, and confirming negotiations with Hamas have completely halted. With the war reigniting, people in Tel Aviv rallying overnight in support of more than 130 hostages still held in Gaza. Well, the fate of the remaining hostages is now more uncertain, but you can feel the determination, the energy here to bring them home. Michael's brother, Or Levy, one of those held. Or's wife, Enav, killed by Hamas on October the 7th. Michael, desperate to get his brother home to his two-year-old son. He lost his mother that was murdered there, and his father is kidnapped and is a hostage now. And for us, it's crucial to, to get him back and to, that, and, and to make sure that Almog uh, will have a father. This weekend, Israeli officials predicting a long war. And when it's over, Israel now planning to control security zones around the Gaza Strip to prevent another terror attack like October 7th. We can't have terrorists on our borders that can just, you know, it will cross over into Israel and butcher our people again. It must be understood the Israeli people will not stand for that any longer. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. The ceasefire between Israel and Hamas is officially over. Black smoke now rising above the Gaza Strip. You see it there as the IDF resumes its airstrikes on Hamas targets in the area. But it appears the Biden administration is looking to back away 
from its steadfast support for Israel. Surprise, surprise. The Washington Post reporting, quote, what began as a bear hug strategy of intense backing by President Biden has become one in which U.S. officials facing growing blowback at home and internationally have distanced themselves from scorched earth Israeli tactics. Meanwhile, the Foundation for Defense of Democracy CEO Mark Dubowitz writing, the Biden administration is setting the stage to abandon Israel. What started off as we are totally with you in destroying Hamas, which is as bad as ISIS, is deteriorating into you don't have our support unless you can dismantle Hamas very quickly with very limited civilian casualties. That is impossible. This is from the Times of Israel. It is allegedly what Tony Blinken said in a private meeting with Israel. Here it goes. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant says the entire Israeli society is united behind the goal of dismantling Hamas, even if it takes months, to which Blinken allegedly replied, I don't think you have the credit for that. That would be as if nearly 3,000 Americans died on 9-11, we go into Afghanistan and our ally Israel or the United Kingdom says you don't have the credit for that while, and we're going to put this up while you speak, they're finding tunnels under children's beds. They're going into hospitals and finding weapons. That is what Israel is dealing with. It's absolutely absurd. Uh, and this is, this is how Hamas fights. This is who Hamas is. We've seen it on display since October 7th and well before that. Maybe Joe's got some warm fuzzies about his support for Israel from the past, but all the staffers, everyone else inside the White House is clearly far more in that pro palace and blame Lincoln's at the front end of that. So your solution now is to push a two-state solution? God gives the most dire warning to the nations who would divide up his land, as we read in Joel 3, 1 and 2, and Zechariah 12, 8 and 9. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them, in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. So this posting by the president last night uh, seemed to contradict the Israelis' intention to wipe out Hamas by continuing the war. What did you make of that? Well, just to start there, to continue down the, the path of terror, did he say? I mean, the, the terrorists are Hamas. I mean, the, the brutal slaughter was Hamas against innocent Israeli citizens. Now, I try and remind people, you know, 1,400 Israelis as, as a percentage of the population would be like almost 50,000 Americans. You can imagine what the American public would demand of our government if 50,000 Americans were brutally slaughtered the way those Israelis were. We have to support Israel. This president should be supporting Israel in their ability to defend themselves. And the only way they can do that long term is destroy Hamas. Let's well, face it, yeah. they, they had a multi-year ceasefire when Israel turned Gaza over to to the Palestinians. They elected Hamas. They built the tunnels. They carried out the terrorist attack. We need to understand that reality. Senator, I don't understand, though, the switch. It's a dramatic change from what he was saying just a month ago, shortly after the, the terror attack uh, of October 7th. He said, we have to be crystal clear. There is no justification for terrorism. My commitment to Israel's security and the safety of Jewish people is unshakable. The United States has Israel's back. This moment, we have to be crystal clear. There is no justification for terrorism, no excuse. And the type of terrorism that was exhibited here was just beyond the pale, beyond the pale. As I said yesterday, my commitment to Israel's security and the safety of the Jewish people is unshakable. The United States has Israel's back. It doesn't look like he has their back anymore. Well, that was until the radical left started putting more and more pressure on President Biden, who's also part of the radical left. Scripture plainly tells us all nations, including America, will be gathered against Jerusalem in the last days. I have often wondered what could possibly cause America to turn on Israel. I believe the answer is now clear. The United States government will one day turn on Israel and bring the wrath of God upon this nation. It is sick that you have dozens of uh, universities where you have students that are protesting in support of Hamas, 
of those brutal murderers. But this shows you what has happened to our university system is the radical left took over them in the mid-60s and they've been indoctrinating our children ever since. This is the result. Here's what uh, Senator Tuberville said last night on Fox Business about not just the president but the entire Democratic Party and their again seeming shift to the very far left of their Democratic Party. Roll take. Uh, the Democrats are trying to ride the fence. They're trying to play both sides. They care nothing about the American people or the people of Israel or the people of Palestine. They care about votes. They care about power. Don't do anything to get in their way to take away votes from them. Uh, and you're exactly right. What happened to the American hostages? Did Joe Biden ever mention that? Does anybody ever mention that? Kirby? It's embarrassing. Senator Tuberville, exactly right. Uh, this is all about power. This is about getting votes. And they're going to continue to cater, you know, using identity politics. Uh, and and they, are, they are the radical left. Democrat Party is the radical left. This is not the party of our parents and grandparents. The, these are radical leftists. They are bent on power. They're bent on, on imposing socialism, which just destroys. It doesn't build anything. The tenor suggesting that, that Israel be wiped out as a nation. A and some of the rhetoric coming from various city councils around the, the country uh, that are that are against any kind of reference to pro-Israel support in, in what their legislatures are coming out with. Here's what one of those protesters said at that city council meeting. The notion that this was a massacre of Jews is a fabricated narrative. Many of those killed on October Thank 7th, you, ma your time is up. including children, were killed by the IDF. So, Senator, that is the narrative now, that, that the IDF, the October 7th massacre, wasn't done by Hamas. It was done by Israelis killing Israelis. What, how, what do you make of this kind of rhetoric? Again, radical leftism, there is no moral equivalence. The terrorists are Hamas. And Israel is the innocent bystander here, and they have every right to defend themselves and destroy Hamas, and that's what we need to support. Well, these are Holocaust deniers right now. If, if you call October 7th a Holocaust, it's just horrific what we're hearing. It's pure anti-Semitism. On May 14th, 1948, a major Bible prophecy was fulfilled concerning Israel. As we read in Isaiah 66, 8, who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. On the evening of May 14, 1948, at precisely 4 p.m., the members of the People's Council in Israel signed the proclamation and the declaration was made that the State of Israel is established. This meeting is adjourned. Israel not only became a nation, but also was literally brought forth as a nation in one day, just as the prophet Isaiah foretold. God has set aside a seven-year period, known as the time of Jacob's trouble, or the seven-year tribulation, to save a remnant of Jews. The prophecies of both Jeremiah and Daniel are crucial in unlocking the mysteries of the book of Revelation. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10. For thus says the Lord, After seventy years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you, and cause you to return to this place. Jeremiah's prophecy concerns the nation of Israel and is referred to as the time of Jacob's trouble, as we read in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, and it is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. The prophet Daniel found himself and his people the Jews in Babylonian captivity. God allowed the nation of Israel to be taken captive for their unfaithfulness. One day, while reading through the scrolls of the prophet Jeremiah, Daniel had an amazing discovery, as we read in Daniel 9, 1-3. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books of the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish seventy years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. As it turns out, Jeremiah had already prophesied that this would take place for a 70-year period. Daniel was so moved and shaken by his discovery that he immediately set out to seek the Lord his God and plead for mercy on Israel and the Jewish people. In the midst of his amazing prayer, the prophet Daniel was given a vision of the end times told to him by the angel Gabriel concerning the Jewish people. Daniel 9:24 through 27. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, 
to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most Holy. Weeks is the Hebrew word Shabua, which means, literally, seven, a week, specifically, of years. What Daniel's prophecy is saying is there are 77s of years. There is one seven-year period for each week. When you take 70 weeks times seven, you get 490 years. You can translate Daniel 9.24 like this. 490 years are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. The prophecy begins by stating that six things will be accomplished regarding the Jewish people during a period of 490 years. Number one, to finish the transgression, which refers to the rejection of Jesus as their Messiah. Number two, to make an end of sins. This period will also witness an end of sin for the Jews. Number three, to make reconciliation for iniquity. The third thing that will happen is the Jews will accept Jesus as their Messiah. Number four, to bring in everlasting righteousness. This will happen when Jesus establishes his earthly kingdom. Number five, to seal up vision and prophecy. The fifth achievement will be the fulfillment of all prophecy concerning the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Number six, and to anoint the most holy. The final goal to be achieved at the end of the 70 weeks of years is the anointing of the Messiah as King of Kings. None of the things listed in verse 24 have found fulfillment in this prophecy concerning the Jewish people. Daniel's prophecy continues in verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublesome times. The first part of verse 25 was fulfilled when the Persian king, Artaxerxes, issued a decree to restore and build Jerusalem on March 14, 445 BC. The second part of verse 25, until Messiah the Prince, was fulfilled when Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem on April 6, 32 AD. From the time King Artaxerxes made the decree to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince was seven weeks and 62 weeks, which equals 69 weeks or 483 years. Verse 26. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the Prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood. Until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Verse 26 was fulfilled when Jesus was crucified on the cross, and the Romans in 70 AD destroyed the second temple that was prophesied to be built in verse 25. After Christ presented himself to Israel as their Messiah on Palm Sunday and was subsequently cut off, a nearly 2,000 year gap ensued. When Christ was cut off, the time clock for the Jewish nation of Israel was put on pause and the church age began. Then, on May 14, 1948, Israel was once again back in the land fulfilling Isaiah 66 8, essentially turning off the pause button. That was significant because Israel had to be back in the land before the prophecy in Daniel 9 24 through 27 could be fulfilled. God had dealt with Israel as a nation up till the time when Messiah was cut off. He does so again when he resumes his plan with Israel for the 70th week, the final seven years, as we read in verse 27. Then he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many, who is Israel, the Palestinians, and possibly other Muslim nations for one week, which is seven years. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, he, the Antichrist, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. The Apostle Paul tells us what this abomination shall be one who makes desolate is in 2 Thessalonians 2.4. Who, speaking of the Antichrist, opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Jesus further expounded on what this abomination shall be one who makes desolate is in Matthew 24, 15 through 18. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house, and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. 
Scripture plainly tells us that when the Antichrist steps into the soon-to-be-rebuilt Third Temple and proclaims to be God and demands to be worshipped as God, that the Jewish people are to flee to the mountains and to do so in a hurry. With world conditions rapidly building to a point of readiness for the events of the 70th week of Daniel, the church more than ever needs to get its spiritual house in order. Today, more than at any time in the last 2,000 years, the church can well expect the fulfillment of Daniel's 70th week prophecy and the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.